September 11th, 2001 is a day almost every American vividly remembers. And for men and women serving in our armed forces, it is a day that directly impacted their decision to serve. They played a big, big role. Uh, I'll never forget that day being in my classroom in high school, you know, and uh, something that stuck in my head. And I mean, you see things like that happen and you just want to help as much as you can, you know, and that's the only way I could help. Keith Barnes Jr. entered the Marine Corps on Veterans Day of 2004, following in the footsteps of his cousin, who also joined the Marine Corps post 9-11. After conversations with his cousin and other family members, Barnes knew in his heart he was doing the right thing, even with some hesitation from his mother. You know, my father was all for it, you know, uh, you know, he wanted to serve and, you know, so he was all for it, pushing for me to serve. Mom was like, no, you know, not my baby and things like that. So, you know, I understand, you know, my, how mothers are, but, you know, everyone was kind of like, you know, it's your decision if you want to go. After enlisting, Barnes was sent to Ramadi, Iraq in August of 2005 for seven months. During that time, he received a combat action ribbon. Then in September of 2006, he was sent to Fallujah for seven months. It was during his tour in Fallujah that Keith's life would be forever changed. One day, it was a beautiful day. i never forget it. I mean, I just said how beautiful it was when we were outside and he heard that whistling sound and it was an RPG and the RPG hit the side of the truck. You know, I mean, those guys, they aim at the bottom of the truck. Uh, they try to aim at the bottom of the truck. So when, uh, you know, rocket hits the ground and blows your tank up. So, I mean, hit the side of the truck, uh, threw me against the truck. I was out for a, a couple minutes, um, came to, and, you know, we were turning fire, you know. Uh, ever since then, you know, was dealing with the migraines and, you know, it's been, I mean, I reflect back on that sometimes. I, I try not to. You know, uh, but I mean, it's something that sticks with you. Keith finished his tour in Fallujah after the attack. But all the while, the lifelong effects of his injuries started to become more prevalent day after day. He says sometimes he would wonder if he would ever be the same person. Honestly, I was, uh, as far as like PTSD goes, I was in denial. Uh, with my migraines, you know, I was like, you know, they're gonna go away. You know, uh, they were happening in Iraq, but you know, we, you gotta push forward. You know, you can't sit there and complain about, you know, I got a headache and the more time went on and everything like that, it start, you start losing hope. You know, you start feeling that things never gonna get better. Since 07, I had migraines. They still going on a date, you know, 2013. And, I, I, I lost that hope that one day it'll get better and, and everything's gonna be all right. And you, you try to sit there and, 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 and push yourself to believe that everything is fine. But it's, I mean, in your heart, you feel like you, you know that it's not, you know? And that's one of the hardest things about it. You know, uh, you start feeling like nothing, nothing ever will. And, you know, and all you can do is just keep trying. That's exactly what Keith has been doing, trying. Trying to not let his injuries take over his life. He constantly reminds himself of his loving family and the support they give him each and every day. My family make things a lot easier. Like I find myself sometimes pushing them away, things like that. I find myself, uh, you know, kind of snapping on my kids sometimes and everything like that, but I mean, when they're around me and they give me that love and they give me that affection that I need, it's like the simplest thing, like I love you and a hug. I mean, it changes everything, you know, it really does. And I mean, they show that love and I mean, it's the best therapy I can have, honestly, you know, having somebody in your corner. I mean, there's a lot of people out there, veterans that don't have anyone, you know, no one to love them. And I have tons of people that love me, you know, and uh, even sometimes I don't, even though sometimes I might feel like they don't because my mind says, oh, well, no one loves you and you're not worth being loved. You know, they come around to just remind me basically that, you know, we're here for you. If you need anything, we're there, you know, so I love them. Looking back on his service with the Marine Corps, Keith knows everything that happened to him during his tours was for a purpose and he would not change his decision to enlist. In fact, Barnes says if he could continue serving his country, he absolutely would.